Now I know I say that the things that I make will probably blow up pretty often, and they almost never do, but this time I can guarantee you that this one probably will. This is a 2 liter bottle that I use for whoosh rockets to test things like whether or not I can make shock diamonds and testing different kinds of rocket nozzles. But this time instead of the nozzle we'll be focusing on the combustion chamber or the bottle and seeing whether or not we can extend the burn time without totally destroying the bottle which we're going to destroy a couple bottles I'm pretty sure. Maybe. The Wish rockets that I've made before have two main problems. First of all, they tend to melt from the heat from combustion, and they also burn very quickly. Now you could inject more fuel and oxidizer in, but that just means the bottle would probably melt that much faster. Both Integza and Sam Rogers have demonstrated the idea of using oxidizer to protect the combustion chamber walls from the heat of combustion, and then using that oxidizer to also fuel the combustion. Now I think I can improve on this, at least if not an outcome, then maybe in theory, by using my fuel, which is liquid isopropyl alcohol, to cool the combustion chamber walls instead of my oxidizer, which is air. And that's mostly because, per volume, it takes a lot more heat to heat up and vaporize this liquid fuel than it would to heat up air. So the plan is to protect the bottle with a thin layer of alcohol, which I'll probably spin down from the neck, which shouldn't be too much of a surprise given that half this channel is just me saying, I'll try spinning, that's a good trick, and then trying to blow something up. But from there, the heat from combustion that would have went into the walls of the bottle is now vaporizing some of that fuel. So if we pump some air in, we should be able to maintain combustion, and if we recirculate that fuel, we can ensure that the bottle is always covered. So if something goes wrong with the pump or the flow of fuel at the neck, then the rocket will basically become a hybrid rocket with an oxidizer, in this case air, being blown past a fixed amount of fuel in the combustion chamber, which is usually solid, but in this case is liquid isopropyl alcohol. And as soon as that alcohol is gone, there is nothing protecting that bottle from the heat of combustion, so it's probably going to fail fantastically and in a hurry, which I want to see that, so it's time to throw some parts together. This wasn't actually too hard to make, with most of the complicated plumbing happening in the brass fittings. Air comes through a port in the side leading to a little tube that goes into the combustion chamber, leaving enough room for fuel to trickle down into the aquarium pump that I salvaged from the dog that I made to pee on poison ivy. From there, the fuel is pumped up to the nozzle, which I designed to spin the fuel along the inside of the bottle, which, for obvious reasons, I also named Bold and Brash. More like belongs in the trash! Ah! And I made two variants, one with a inbuilt nozzle and one with threads to accept exterior nozzles, like the fan favorite Squaro Spike. I, I get it. <laughs> These external nozzles will be secured with o rings and some super glue because I was feeling paranoid, and they'll all be printed out of either clear PETG or some wood PLA filament that I thought would do a good job of charring before it melted. With everything thrown together, we can test this now with water. So yeah, there's some issues. Luckily, the properties of water and my fuel, alcohol, are very different, with alcohol having much less surface tension than water. So resetting and retrying with my isopropyl alcohol fuel made for a lot better results. So that's the film cooling more or less sorted out. The ignition will come from a barbecue igniter, which I'll clip onto some Frankenstein bolts on the nozzle, and the compressed air will be controlled by a solenoid, which will in turn be controlled by a control panel that I made for an earlier video. Speaking of made in another video, it's not lazy, it's just a callback to the shameless plug reminding you to like, share, and subscribe to make the algorithm happy if you are enjoying the video. The first test is just going to see how the whole system handles the pressure of combustion without injecting any air, so just really the film cooling aspect. And before this whole thing gets covered in flames, I've gotta say, I find this just beautiful. So the answer is no, the plumbing can't handle all that pressure, which I kinda knew that the pump couldn't, I mean, it's just an aquarium pump, which is why I put it in a bucket, but I wanted to try it anyway. Ah! 
So clearly the issue is whenever combustion starts in the chamber, the pressure travels down the tubes to the pump, where the pressure differential between the combustion pressure and the atmospheric pressure is so great that the pump just explodes. An easy solution to this is to build a container around the pump so that whenever it fills with fuel and is pressurized, the pressure differential across the pump is almost nothing, and all of the pressure differential between the combustion pressure and atmospheric pressure is held by that container. So I went to the store and grabbed some PVC parts just big enough to fit our pump. All right, round two, same thing. I'm not gonna inject any air. I'm just going to see how well the film cooling system can handle the pressure of combustion. So that went a lot better, obviously, than a pump exploding, but there's still an issue. Watch right here. So whenever the combustion first started, it looked like a lot of that exhaust was being pushed down the tube that the fuel was supposed to be coming up. Now this seemed odd to me because gases in the main part of the combustion chamber should be moving relatively slow, have a high temperature and a high pressure. Near the neck they should be faster moving, having traded some of that temperature and pressure for velocity. So if anything, I'd expect a little bit of a siphoning effect, kind of like a Venturi in a carburetor, which if you haven't seen that Smarter Every Day video, you should, it's, it's good. Anyway, what I think is happening is the fast moving exhaust is hitting the nozzle and creating what's called a stagnation point. That basically means that our fast flowing exhaust is brought to a near stop, and the pressure and temperature that was used to gain that velocity is brought back out, and since this stagnation point is right next to the inlet of the fuel, it ends up pushing exhaust down that tube. If you want to see an example of a stagnation point, you can look at one of my older videos where to demonstrate the danger of these wish rockets, I just fired one at a hot dog. And there you have it, a stagnation point on a hot dog, where the abrupt stop makes the pressure and temperature much higher, making the gases easier to see. As a side note, stagnation points aren't a great thing to have on your skin. All of that being said, I think eventually the flow will stabilize and the stagnation point will go away, which would be easy enough to test just by pumping a bunch of air into it. But before I do, I'll have to make a diffuser, because I learned early on that without one, the incoming air can just blow the film cooling off of the walls, which isn't great, so I need something to spread it out. In this case, I just printed out a little nozzle and wrapped some steel wool around it. I've almost kind of forgotten about the stagnation point now because the dry out condition seems like it's going to be a real problem. Because if a dry spot forms by the film being blown away, then that means the bottle's going to be exposed directly to combustion temperatures, which won't end well for it. But like I said in the beginning, I went into this knowing that these were all going to fail, but I'm trying to learn a few lessons on how I could extend the lives of these rockets, and to do that, the best way is just to test them. So let's start with a sort of control, with no film cooling, just a little bit of alcohol on the bottom that will hopefully evaporate and mix with the air we're pumping in to make the combustion last longer. So the mixture of air and fuel didn't go very well, but you could also see the bottle start to fail almost immediately. So now let's try it with some film cooling.
Now, aside from the fact that the bottle looked like it was searching for a couple of hobbits, there was a couple cool things I wanted to point out. First of all being that the exhaust did go down the tube at least a little bit, but I think once the flow kind of stabilized it stopped, and you can tell the pump is still working because it's blowing a ton of fuel out of the nozzle, which means that we're also not getting a ton of cooling here, and you can see that the bottle fails right where the exhaust splits on the wall of the bottle. And lastly, I was admittedly a little more focused on giggling that this actually worked than putting out the fire. <laughs> So by the time I finally put it out, the fighter had done an astonishing $3 worth of damage, so after taking out a couple of loans, I was finally ready to test this again at 80 PSI instead of 60 PSI on the air inlet. Some interesting things about this one, besides the fact that the square spike didn't just instantly fail, would be one, the pinhole leak that was just spraying fuel out of it, and then two, the glow right at the throat of the square spike, which tells me that the fuel mixed in with the exhaust might be the only thing saving the nozzle right now. And then finally, after the whole thing had been on fire for quite a while, the air tube caught on fire and burst. And with that smoldering mess, I think it's time to bump up the air coming in to 100 PSI. Now, with this one, what to watch might be kind of obvious, but if you watch closely at the neck of the bottle, you can see it starts to deform before it explodes. Now, I don't get my strongest prints out of this wood PLA, but that rupture was enough to shear off part of this bracket. But besides using stronger materials for my prints, I have at least one major idea on how to improve this, which would be turning the whole thing upside down. That way the exhaust and the film cooling are moving in the same direction, and there's a lot less chance of a dry out condition. Now, this obviously causes a lot of other issues, which I have ideas on how to solve some of them, but not all of them. And if you have some ideas on other things that could be improved, just let me know in the comments. Oh, an update on Bonnie and Clyde, uh, the red-shouldered hawks that live in my backyard. Uh, they are two chicks, I decided to name them Luke and Leia, since their dad definitely killed a bunch of youngling birds. And not only did they do that, they also chased off a red-tailed hawk, which was kinda cool. But aside from that, they had a pretty quiet little childhood, and they grew up very, very quickly, and I hope they go on to terrorize other small birds and mammals. And I also would love if, like, a barred owl used this nest next year, but we'll have to wait and see. I hope you guys enjoyed watching that as much as I enjoyed making it, and if you did, just do all the stuff that makes the algorithm happy. I'm thinking about doing something mechanical for my next video, but I also want to tinker with this a little more, so let me know what you think in the comments, and thanks for watching.